Well, hello and welcome to the Econobox Garage. This week we're going to continue with our Buckeye build. In the previous episode, you'll have seen that I got the primer finished on the tub, or at least the first couple of coats, and I got the handbrake disassembled and ready and cleaned, ready to put back together. And this week I'm going to do just that. And also I'm going to give you a preview of what's going to be happening over the winter. Even though I can't uh, do much on the bodywork as far as filler and painting is concerned, there's still lots of stuff I can do uh, with uh, some welding, patching, cleaning, and refurbishing other parts. So thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy this week's video. Well, here we have the parking brake assembly all cleaned up. Um, got a coat of paint on the main bracket. So now I'm just going to put everything back together and get it ready to reinstall in the car. Well, first thing is to attach the this plate with the, the ratchet assembly on it to uh, the bracket using these two large countersunk flathead screws. Next step is to put the, the lever itself in, and uh, so let's get that done. There's the lever into its hole, and we'll flip it over on the back side. Next up is uh, the little arm that attaches on here, and the important thing with this, of course, is to get it on so that when you pull up on the lever, this piece goes that way, so it pulls on the cable. So let's get that put on. Okay, so there we have the actuator arm. Uh, bolted down uh, and one thing I did do I forgot to mention is I put some high temp grease um, on the shaft of the lever before I put it uh, in there and I just used uh, some uh, ultra slick brake lube for that. Before I reinstall the cable itself onto the arm you'll notice that there are two different threaded sections in the cable uh, one is a very short one, and one is quite a bit longer. I just have to remember which end actually ends up getting mounted on the lever here. I checked in the shop manual, and this end goes closer to the handle, and the one with the longer threads goes towards the rear axle. The answer to that question is a lot simpler, because as it turns out, the hole on this end, where the uh, pin goes through, is actually larger than the hole at this end. So really I don't have a, a choice in which way this goes back on the, the arm. So I've got the appropriate clevis pins here with their washers and cotter pins. So I'll get that put back in. So what it boils down to is there's only one way that this cable can mount to the arm. So now that we have the cable reattached to the actuator arm, I'm just going to slip the uh, clevis pin in the other end temporarily because it's not going to get hooked up yet. And that is ready to go back in the car. And there we have the handbrake reinstalled in the car. I cleaned up the bolts uh, for it. That operates smoothly. And this is just a little awkward to get to for this one. Can't get a ratchet on it or a socket on it. So you better use a, a wrench. But uh, other than that, Looks good in there. So, on to the next project. Well, 
One of the major projects over the winter is going to be refurbishing the seats. Now these are not original to this car. When I got the car it would had some seats from a Triumph GT6 I believe. So I've uh, passed those on to someone that can use them. And I picked these up a, a couple of summers ago. Now these are originally out of a Mark II Sprite I believe. Uh, so both seats are going to be adjustable in this car. Of these, the, the vinyl on these is really dried out and cracked and, and what have you. So I'm just going to pop off the, the cushion so I can get a look at the seat bases themselves. So this is the first seat here. And the frame itself looks to be in really good shape. I just need some cleaning up and uh, get rid of the rust. Then I'll obviously have to take off the back as well. Flip this over. And the tracks themselves seem to be in really good shape. And I have new tracks that part the bolts to the, the floor itself. I have new ones of those. So both seats will be adjustable. Not that that's a big deal. But uh, this seat is, uh, the frame itself is in good, really good shape other than the rust. Now for the seat pan, uh, we've got some rust in the back half here. But that's not going to be too difficult to uh, to recreate, um, and I'll get a better idea of the con overall condition of the the seat itself uh, once I get the cover off. Okay, for seat number two, it a two, the base itself appears to be in good shape. A little rustier around here, but that's something I can work with. Um, lots of places on how to to get rid of rust. So I should be able to free these up. I'm hoping I can because these are, are actually riveted to the seat frame, not bolted. And for the seat pan itself, uh, still some sur what appears to be mostly surface rust. So I think this one will clean up quite a bit easier uh, than seat number one. On seat number two, the carpeted section of the seat back has gone and exposed the, the frame and it appears from what I can see anyway, uh, to be really solid. And again, uh, we'll get a closer look at that when we get the cover off. Well, another of the things I'm going to be working on over this winter is recreating all the interior panels. Now, I'm fortunate that I have all the original ones here, or for close to original, uh, so I can use those as templates uh, to recreate new ones and then get those recovered. I'm also very thankful that I have the uh, actual door pockets uh, for both doors in very good shape and just need recovering and I just need to recreate the raised bit around the side here. I also have template for the panels that go inside the boot behind uh, the wheel arch. So these two panels here are for the outside edges of the uh, footwells. This is for along the sill for this, this side, the seat. There's one for each side, one there, one there. This one goes uh, at the front of the transmission tunnel, and these two go on the sides of the transmission tunnel in uh, the footwell. And then these two odd shaped ones uh, go either side just behind the seats. Those little notches go around the pockets for the top bow. And then, of course, I've got the, uh, the door pockets. Another project um, I'm going to be working on is uh, I've got to weld up this spot in the wheel arch of the, the, the bonnet. Now, I had started on this, but my welding skills weren't uh, where they should be. And also, I hadn't realized I'd ran out of gas uh, when I started this. So I'm going to revisit this over the winter and get that repaired and then look for any other repairs I have to do um, um, while I'm working on that. So that's, again, another winter project. And then we'll also have a look at the doors. One of the things I will be doing um, as well is I'll be running the brake line and the fuel line um, on the underside of the car. Well, that wraps up another episode in our bug eye build. I didn't actually get a lot of work done uh, but I hope you enjoyed the re preview of the kind of things I'm going to be working on over the upcoming winter. I appreciate your suggestions and questions, so please be sure to leave those in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, please share it with your friends. 
uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget the little bell icon so you'll get notified when you, the next videos come out. If you'd like to contact me directly, the easiest way to do so would be through Instagram Direct. I have a link to my Instagram page um, in the description below, but, and I'll put my tag up in the corner here for you so you can check that out that way as well. So thanks for joining me this week. My name is Ian. This is the Econobox Garage. We'll see you next time.